Okay, today we look at something a little bit different. We look at one specialized place in the world, or the ancient world, and going back much farther than we usually do on the channel here to discuss ancient maritime boating. This is going to be classified more on human origins and my catalog that I have under that and how it connects to humanity and we're going to go through who was where at what time and things like that so it'll get interesting grab a cup of coffee and let's take a look down here on this coastline which at one time didn't used to be the coastline the water was a little bit lower but we'll get there so looking at this site here that we have they have found neanderthal remains within this cave here and it shows by these articles here that on Crete new evidence of very ancient mariners have been found. What is this? And the other one says that they're on a search for a Stone Age Odysseus. In fact, they're actually looking way far back for a Stone Age Odysseus type. It's a kind of a common trope for people to use something like say, well, it's the Stonehenge of so-and-so and things like that, rather than leaving it alone or the ideas of Odysseus, which seem to stem from stories that go back at least to the starting of the last Ice Age. On my channel, we've discussed recently about mythology and how far it reaches back in certain mythologies and certain ones that we pinpoint as the oldest ones that we still have that are something that we see today. And those mythologies are still around today and stems off of that led to certain things and I've talked about how religion came about from that and where well a lot of these people that are deeper in the study than I am have come up with these ideas and concepts just like these articles that are here that we'll look into a couple of as we go into it but you can look these up if you take the title and you put this in and wiki, google, whatever, it's going to end up popping these and then you can find a trace to find the articles and stuff on each one. What's beautiful here is we're putting a few things together and coming up with a stew of knowledge. And it's about ancient maritime boating because Crete has actually been underwater all the way back to four and a half, five thousand, uh, five million years. And yet we're finding people were on this in ancient of times. In fact, there's a Neanderthal found and there is Cro-Magnon type found in this same island. Or what we'd say Homo sapiens, a modern human. We'll get into that deeper too in a little bit. Let's continue. That there were tools for hundreds of years now, or since it was found actually, that there were Stone Age tools that they had found in a few archaeological sites and on these archaeological sites these tools in the rest of the world and surrounding that island on the mainland were this very similar type of tool but we also at that same time were correlating different science with each other and it figured out, you know, during the last ice age, there was a bunch of water all trapped up and the sea levels were a lot lower. And what was its maximum? And we figured that out. And then we figured when it all let loose again, where it was at too. So we're able to discern the high and low of that fluctuation of whether you've got a block of ice in your drink or not. And how that raises up or does not raise your drink, if you will, mentally. Let's, let's just go with that concept. And so this island and a few others were actually never attached to the mainland. Other ones were, and we're going to look at that shortly in a depiction of the concept. But in, an, in reality, this was always an island. It was always some at least 26 miles away. I don't know if you've ever done any decent swimming or anything like that, but if people try to invoke that Neanderthals and these Cro-Mags were swimming, that's great. 
but it's hard to ask a Navy SEAL or anybody to try to do something like this. It takes professional athletes that are attempting to do it to be able to cross the English Channel and stuff like that. I grew up with these ideas, you know, and watched people do it. And it was a thing whenever they did it, not something that you could attribute to ancient man. And that would seem to be an apologetic to try to come up with some idea. Oh, he just held on to a log then. You know, or something like that. Like, he's just going to float out in the Mediterranean. Like, these people just had this thing where they would grab onto driftwood and just float off. And they just wondered where the hell they would go, you know, and stuff. Is is, is this going to try to be invoked other than the fact that they actually had something that we would refer to maritime boating? Whether you give them an idea of somehow building a primitive raft like Tom Sawyer and getting people on that. Or you want to say that they had a dugout canoe, which probably is not in effect either. They probably at least had something like an outrigger, which is like a small canoe hooked up to a big canoe by a couple of poles across it and lashed. And this keeps the big canoe from rocking and tipping over real easy. It's a little pontoon boat, things like that we know. But the simplest form of that is there are people in those boats too. And because they're strapped together, nobody's tipping over and everything, and you can go. And you can have three groups of people. They don't all have to be in that original boat. In fact, you can add the pontoon that goes across there. If you build it out of just two big boats, you can put a large amount of things on that. In fact, this is the idea of the Sumerian reed boat, where it's a reed boat and another reed boat, slightly separated, and then it's got this huge platform that's on that. We can see that going all the way through Roman times in some giant ships. But let's go back farther in time because there's implications by this, as it says here, that the earliest occupation of the central Aegean or Naxos Crease area, implications for hominin and homo sapiens behavior and dispersal. And in that paper they're like, hey, it looks like there are people somewhere around, give or take 13,000 years, of 200,000 years ago, there were people that did a maritime act. And it wasn't a one-time thing for it seems to carry over a period of time and get a large people together and so on. And we can only deduce that they didn't just do this one time and came up with the idea and went to an island and then never did it again for tens of thousands of years or anything along that line. There are other things that do show that 160,000 years something like this happened. And the bottom article here talks about how another time this happened with Stone Age tools found on Crete itself again. Prove man sailed the sea at least 130,000 years ago. Again, you can t find these articles yourself and look them up. If I was to go through them and talk like I do through them, we would actually never have Christmas. So, let's continue. But what's neat about this is if you can put these articles together that are peer-reviewed. I mean, these people are well-known. The names that are below, the studies that are right there, are well-known. And then these articles have been peer-reviewed by many people and stuff. And so... They're, they have this Lavalas and Mousterian culture tools going on, along with the Orignacian type of cultures. That's what's there. And so what can you deduce from that? Now, it's not even Occam's razor that says, well, it had to be maritime people. It only makes sense to go that way. Also, if we look at Cro-Magnon and his dispersal, it shows that he was going into North Africa across these Gibraltar Straits and concentrating around Spain and through Italy and so on, and not so much around the Levant that we find his, his remains and stuff, but you find them all over North Africa. And so they were zigzagging going then. It's amazing how during my lifetime all this idea has changed because, again, I've said it before, people thought that uh, everybody must have been UG right before the Sumerians started up and the Egyptians shortly after, and here we go. But that isn't the way it goes. I mean, we were led to believe it just pops up like popcorn and what happens. And actually, because of religious beliefs, there's something that wanted to attach it to that point. 
and not allow archaeology from beyond that point. It happened in the Americas too where they told you about how far you could dig and you're going to find everything down to Clovis but don't dig any further. A couple of people mistakenly did and well, what's this? Now we've got an age that just totally blows that Clovis first out of water. It makes them actually like Clovis third or fifth maybe even by now. But people are over 30,000 years in America and footprints and all this stuff going on and it's undeniable. Now, the question is, is when we're going to actually teach this and have it come out like BAM, like be all over TV and things like that to where people know this because people aren't knowing this. And this is going to be something which is just kind of mulled over and most of society would not know it unless you're well into archaeology and how the fact of what we realize the way things went has changed. Sometimes there's a change, sometimes it just elaborates on it and you get a little bit more. Again, I've always say whenever they go, this is the earliest da-da-da, and I go, this is the earliest known da-da-da. Well, this is the first da -da. no, no, this is the earliest known. Somebody's going to find one. Does this look brand new to you? Does this look like somebody came up with it yesterday? This would have happened before. In most cases, you can do that. And what's strange with archaeology is the concept here is if I don't like the idea and I want to go with a biblical kind of model, I'll try to draw it down in time, although it destroyed it long ago, they still do it, where they draw it down in time towards ones that they want to fit with their narrative. If it's the other way, they'll push it all the way out. You get a spread of dates, and they're going to try to go for it somehow, as opposed to just taking it on its full face value, adding it in, and then telling everybody what the new soup is called, because it's really the same thing, but this is more of the reality of that same issue. When they find remains of people all of a sudden hundreds of thousands of years earlier than we thought, it really has to change our ideals. We're going to get into that concept here shortly and uh, kind of give a an idea of the way things went. I mean, we are always left with that idea of this monkey slowly turns into man with this chart that's here going on but it didn't really work that way and it's not linear and everybody didn't change at the same time or anything it's quite different in fact at the last ice age there was a whole lot more haplogroup type of people than we have today it was a different world and quite often they try to refer to it as something like lord of the rings where there were elves and there was this and there was that and there were even littler people and so on like that. Well, we still have pygmies and stuff today, but Florence and places like that that we've learned about were just like the elephants on islands like that got real small. So did the people for certain reasons. Eagles got big in certain islands and stuff and so on. And of course, early travelers would tell you this story, but it'd get out of hand a little bit. And it went from picking up a small child that could pick a human up to the stories that are intertwined in that same Lord of the Rings idea with you could fly on the back of an eagle. Amazingly, the want for that concept has us to where we're flying today. There were certain people that's all connected through all of that, but let's look at this information here. It'll show you a whole lot more um, concepts and a little bit more of the reality whenever you blend it all together. So, Here's a concept that came out, and this was strange, where people tried right before this to vehemently de uh, debunk or take away the concept that Cro-Magnon, a much more advanced person we know all around, than Neanderthals, could not have been doing maritime everything. In fact, a lot of us believe that uh, Noah was the first ship that was ever made somehow, and people actually thought the world was flat whenever we found the Americas. Other than reality of what the Greeks knew, and the Sumerians actually before that where the Greeks got it, and the Library of Alexandria, and all the things that go with that that I have other videos on, and don't want to really go into depth on. But it's amazing how they want to discount that. Then these people come out, a few of them are well known, with a paper that says Neanderthals were ancient mariners, because here's this, here's that, and the water was never below that. Therefore, i.e., they were maritime travelers to this island at one point. 
And if you consciously think about it, it's not going to be something that's going to be like, oh, they invented a raft, they used it one time, it floated away, and then nobody ever did it again, or anything like that. Or the other flips off of that was, hey, has somebody else been doing this already for a while now before they ended up even staying on this island? How long would it take before they would make that journey? And all of a sudden, man, people, oh, there's this, there's this dismay about this idea going on. Sure, it wouldn't have looked like this. It would have more, been more like trees wrapped together, you know, with ropes and stuff. And instead of having a sail that looks like it there, the first concept was that they put a tree on it, like the mast, and then just blowing in the tree helped push them along. Of course, in the Gilgamesh tale, there's an idea that he invented the sail because he took one of his pieces of clothing off and held it up and used it as a sail to get across. But uh, that actually shows you that they had it going on, and you can't give that a first evidence of anything like a sail. There are masted boats that have been showing going back thousands of years, and <clears throat> there's some depictions in ancient times of boats, and they're far away from an aquatic source that we'd have any recollection of finding even now, even in our archaeology, even in our studies of the earth and the way that it changed over time and everything there's no way that there was anybody here with a boat and then there's in the cave right there there's people with a boat and they're getting pulled along like on the land like a sled and sleds go along with this concept too and sleds go all the way into Egypt it's kind of a pre-wheel situation and then some certain people came along with the wheel and we went from there on that but these things start to expound upon themselves but strangely they discount Cro-Magnons. Now, here's the thing, because of the current narrative, they're going to discount Cro-Magnons as having it had anything to do with this or any maritimeness. But then this paper came out, and they had nothing to say bad about it, figured out, went peer-reviewed, and uh, so now Neanderthals could have done it. But the lowly Cro-Magnons could not have. Well, lo and behold, they found these toolkits that we're looking at. That's not Neanderthal. These ones right here, that's definitely Lavalis and other things that are Cro-Magnon. It's much more advanced. Unless you want to try to say that this was some special advanced Neanderthals, and the first thing they did was make a boat and go on this island and die off. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no way you can reconcile it as to happening. And then, of course... Further excavations proved it, and we'll try to look at that a little bit as we go on. I should have let this run on a little bit as I was talking there, but let's just go on with this idea, too, that's shown on, because there are people that are making all of these assumptions and certain videos by channels and everything, and I'm not pointing out, too, but this new girl on the scene here that's been coming on, showing a lot of stuff, which is pretty interesting, and she studies and everything to it. She's been into it, so pretty good, but also... Other things, like on the left that you see where people are talking about Neanderthals and how much more they were advanced, and certain people were specializing in certain things because of the way that their finger bones and things are, and the way this was, and all of a sudden they're starting to realize that Neanderthal, not only were we not UG, but we're far more advanced than them. But lo and behold, we have some interaction with these people, and there is still some admixes left with we're actually pretty much everybody that ever went out of Africa. Now we find that's not true because the people that we tried to study uh, as a zero source, thinking they were probably the least admixed out of all the people who are left, were actually admixed too along with all the others, albeit a little bit less, and then a little further to dig deep into it, and they have less than one percent, but that's from the admix of the people that actually already had some Neanderthal DNA i.e. somebody's got two and a half to three and a half percent or whatever, and they get a small percentage, what ends up being somewhere between 22 to 38 percent Caucasian. So 22 divided by the center, so it's a little less than one percent, huh? Comes across as like that. But Neanderthals are Stone Age people, and they may have voyaged to the Mediterranean, or through the Mediterranean, taken treks during that time, followed seaways, followed rivers and did that for a long time before somebody was willing to go out deep in that ocean. And we understand that even in ancient times, early Sumerians and so on, they had tales about the ocean, which is a deep abyss. 
surrounding all the land that they were living on at that time, and Mediterranean means Middle Earth, and it's kind of odd because the Mediterranean is not the Earth. So what are we talking about? Well, it's the water in the middle of around what they used to call Middle Earth. And these ancient advanced people, ranging, I guess, from Neanderthals, through that, but there's Denisovans too, but they really came through and trekked off to the east and are connected to people that are more in the east that people in the west didn't necessarily get, but they did get Neanderthal too. So there's variations on a theme going here, but then there are also groups, like we talked about, the Sub-Saharans that really didn't get any, and the, the small percentage they do have now we detect is from Admix of people that had a little bit, and they got a tiny fraction. Let's continue. So there's all kinds of things being shown about the advancement, how advanced Neanderthals are, and it's strange, but there are papers that talk about the advancement of Cro-Magnon and how he is even more advanced than the Homo sapiens as he steps on, and we call it Cro-Magnon. Well, one thing that throws this off and makes them not really want to talk about it is the you know new current hate against white people somehow to be the heralds of civilization, and then um, you're bad, but don't you like everything they've brought, and in fact, the way of civilization and everything else that everybody tries to mimic. Let's continue, though, and not do that, because reality starts to become racist, and just between you and me, a very smart man that's well-respected once said that if reality comes out to being racist, then we really don't have a problem and have a quite big problem, don't we? So, early humans reached Greek islands 200,000 years ago, changing picture of spread from Africa. And then so this whole idea of out of Africa, and it gets kind of shattered somewhat. And it would be an oddity to find out that right around this same time is the earliest people that we say is a modern human that is Homo sapiens. Let's look at that for a minute, though, because we have Homo sapiens, and then we have Homo sapiens sapiens, and the way that I understand it, as I was taught pretty much, is that Homo sapiens sapiens is that modern version instead of just Homo sapiens, which is a more larger-brained, hominid, humanoid, but not quite human, and then everything that comes before that, including Neanderthals, was considered to be a hominid. And it still is in some realms, but you see some realms trying to take and adopt in and call that humans as far as saying that, it, well, it's part of our lineage then, so they're humans. And it's like, that's not a human. In fact, Homo sapiens sapiens was the most modern human. Here it is right here. But the people that were doing this study, of course, were Caucasians, and they were looking at themselves. When they started to look at others, other things started to become evident. And then after that point, there got to be a point where there was this word that they found they thought was magic called racist, where if you say something bad about somebody else, then that's just real bad in modern day. And I can take that concept as a blanket, and that's fine. But you'll find that it's an extreme flip-flop and what one people are saying versus others while they prop them up. And just, it, it's crazy what's currently going on in the narratives versus the reality that you can see. And hey, something like this that I'll go through into depth here a little deeper will actually show you the truth and reality of the way things worked out a little bit more than what you're currently taught. I don't know who's listening from where. Tell me what you get taught versus what this said, versus what you think reality is as being different than that. I'll try to have a conversation with you down in the comments below, but... There's a skull fragment found from Greek caves suggests modern humans were in Europe more than 200,000 years ago. And so if you went with the East African dating that we used to have right before a recent modern time, and a lot of people are still referring to this, I found out, like even people in the field are unaware, by the way, that they found a modern Homo sapiens in Africa, not in East Africa, right there at the threshold of going out, but across the other way, on the edge of the Mediterranean in Jebel Arud Cave near Morocco. And it dates to 315 to 325,000 years ago, throwing over 100,000 years on top of the dating that we had that was already an incredible date. But the odd thing there is that, well, so that's the earliest known so far, Homo sapiens. 
Is it Homo sapiens sapiens? No, that happens, well, they're arguing about it still to this day, between 160 and 135,000 years ago or whatever. But there's another idea that we have that Cro-Magnon man, at least 30,000 years ago, is still here today. Because we've got his genetics and they're like, that's Bob. He's the same haplo group and everything. It wasn't like there was these radical changes going on. And this leads to other thoughts, like I had in a recent video showing Soy Keda saying that at least 60,000 years, Caucasians of that type were all around North, uh, North Africa and out whenever they did the out of Africa. And they were all pretty much just like they are, even though they got a little bit of admix from a Neanderthal, which is a closer relative to them than anybody else on the planet. But it's also easily readily detectable. You can actually look at... Uh, in Neanderthal genetics, and apparently it stands out like a thumb in a field of hands with fingers. It just sticks out like a sore thumb, however you want to take that expression. These tools on the bottom right, though, that's a double biface blade, and that's hooked up through the tool kit of Cro-Magnon Man. And that's found with the thing that people tried to say was only Neanderthals, and they're saying, no, you know, this goes across over a period of time. Y'all went through a period of depth here. There wasn't a one-time event. There's a span here, and there's some different stuff going on at different levels. More than one person. Let's get back into this. So, again, pontoon boats. People are probably well aware of, uh, you know, how this looks, and then if anybody's watched something like Moana or anything recently, you get an idea of how these Polynesians had boats like that. And it's as simple as you strap two canoes together, put a strap off between it, you lock and wedge onto that thing that pulls as a outrigger, and you have a sail, and it pulls you, but it pulls you out wherever the wind's going to blow. But if you add the idea of some oars in the water, on one side or the other of the boat, especially at the very front and the very back of it, you can kind of veer. While you're getting pushed this way, you can kind of veer. There's a certain amount of percentage of that. And of course, you can catawampus go back and forth and jibe and the things that they talk about in sailing and go even go against the wind, but you're zigzagging back and forth instead of just going, ripping with it. But, uh, well, we're aware of these people doing this type of activity, and we can find migrations all over the world. And strange things I've mentioned before, if you take a look over here, right at this point here in the Horn of Africa, because there's no remnant that goes to North Africa, or just out, or back into Yemen, or anything, and it looks like hop, 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 it went over. That's the Australian people, and they never really did occupy, if you will, those uh, coastal places, but did more of an island hopping way back, somewhere around 50,000 years ago. And by 40,000 years ago, they were already, or 38, were already in Australia, right? Oh, I don't have arguments with people. But then what that shows is there's a gap here and there's a gap here that no matter how much ice you give the earth and the stuff, those, they actually had to be a maritime people. And because they left out of there, went across the Red Sea, there you go again, and they did skip, 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 and then they went again and skip, 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 and that's only where they see it at. Now, amazing thing is, is if we were to drop the ocean, we're probably going to find them all over the coast and within view of the water and pretty much all endeavors that lead up into that and of course you can have them come through here and not go this way and blend into the people that are part of the darker skinned island people and Solomon Islanders and Fiji that look a lot darker skinned than a lot of the other islanders and the farther north you get you get blends with oriental type people and so on and I don't want to get into the whole hack of it here but right there you can see there's a people that are maritime but because of these other places here, there's not really a forced idea of maritime on it. Although that Cro-Magnon thing where he comes across here readily and back and forth looks like he was doing that there and spread it through the Mediterranean, almost like an Atlantean idea, but that would predate it by quite a bit, wouldn't it? 
In this concept, though, uh, there is a few places that actually would have to be water, like the Australian Aborigines, so we give credit for that, credit for this, but then the people that we know of that are at this time that are more advanced, and perhaps even have witnessed these people in some way, don't have it going on, and they don't have it going on forever until Noah's Ark, and then they think the world's flat and they're going to fall off of it. Strange narratives we hear sometimes off of it whenever you actually study into this and find out whenever we knew the world was round and almost the perfect size of it that we have today and everything. And the only thing that held that back of truth is somewhat a deeper belief in that religion than there probably should have been at the time or after. So this is showing the idea of a human diversity and the secrets of human diversity. And now we say out of Africa, out of Africa. If you'll look at this, um, they always tried to say they were coming out of East Africa. Now this would have to be thought changed, but they don't have anything to attach it to yet, people, by the way. But way over here is Jebel Arud, about the tip of my pointer there. And in that, there'd have to be another map drawn where they were here. And for 100,000 years, they ended up blending over here and up here, but then out. And whenever they went out, they went all over the place. See, the strange thing about this thing, whenever you got that idea, everybody's got that right now, right? Okay, truth to reality, there's already Neanderthals out of there and stuff, and then Denisovans later and stuff, so where did that all come from? Well, they formed in Africa, but there's no showing of it, and all the people in Africa never got it, so whatever they had was something special and totally different. Oh, you mean so it wasn't in Africa? Or it came out so long before that that it was able to deviate and evolve into a situation that was that too. So where does Neanderthals come from? Where's all this other? People don't want to talk about those subjects though. And then they want to still give this UG idea when we find out, no man, we're talking about uh, 200,000 BC maritime people. Versus your UG before Samaria concept. Doesn't work right. Doesn't work well. Well, you'll find with ideas like Gobekli Tepe and everything, people are coming into an enlightenment age again somehow, almost like the Renaissance, of figuring out, wow, it did go back much further. Kudos to Graham Hancock. No matter if he says it's more extravagant than it is or anything else, boom, there it is. Just like I made my video about Atlantis, and I go, you know, before the Greeks were at the point that we're at there, if you take a few thousand years off of them, they were a lot less advanced. And they're saying these Atlanteans were pretty much as advanced as like the Greeks were. And that's the only example they had. Or the Phoenicians. And their circled little bay city that was down there in Carthage and so on. And the idea of Crete, actually, that we're talking about today having exploded and left a ring like that. And boom, and it was gone in a day and a night and so on. But you can twist it into other ideas. Anyhow. Let's continue with this and get out of that. But all these people that went out of Africa apparently started rapidly becoming maritime people with uh, boats and everything in rivers and things like that. You know, if you, if you take the world and you take a world map and you, they know now about the maximum of what it was height and maximum of low of the ocean due to all the ice accumulation on the poles and so on and those ice shelves coming down. And it's quite dramatic how deep that is in difference. But as deep, deep as the ocean was, some places it doesn't even matter. Here you're seeing the dark green versus the green green. And that dark green would be the difference of what it was at one time versus now. Because a lot of these don't go off real slow sloping. They actually fall off with a little continental shelf idea. So some places grew and grew together. Other ones didn't. Like Madagascar had a point about it. But even though you see the Red Sea here and it's coming out to it, there's always a gap across there. Yeah, but you can even see it. And if that was at its low point, it becomes a simple thing where you actually are crossing something more like a river. Oh, I don't want to get into the Moses idea. But this is a time, too, whenever there was a green Sahara. In fact, it flops back and forth and goes through all of these... Uh, 
tumultuousness, whether the weather patterns are trying to run across and into the Mediterranean or they were coming across and going through the Sahara area as we know it today. And so it goes from being dried up air and zilch rain, really, to all of a sudden more of a temperate tropical type of thing. Wouldn't believe the oil reserves that are probably up under that too, but it's a hell of a thing to... You, you still to this day can't really just lollygag and go around through the Sahara no matter if you have camels or cars or anything. You know, if you had a helicopter, you can probably make it, but if it goes down, you're in trouble. And it's not something to be messed with too much out in the middle of nowhere. Although we've learned a lot about it by being right over here in the Yemen area and doing all of this and Saudi Arabia and Ag Keg and all their oil thing, and this is really not too much different. So we'll have to encroach on that one day or whatever, but we're all going towards electric superpower and the space age we're leading into now. But in this idea here, there are, you can see there are a few places that are different. In fact, up here off the other side of Yemen is the Persian Gulf idea, and that was actually not a gulf there. In fact, they can see we're running through that was a river, and it used to be silted up different way down near Dilmun and all these things, and some of the Sumerian tales act like they're talking about that. But that island of Dilmun was separated, and it was a special island, like Eden, and didn't have any snakes or bad creatures on it. And uh, it's kind of special and set right, almost a Shangri-La situation, but I guess let's get off of that and into this idea. You can see the north coast of Africa here changes quite a bit, but other parts only gain a little bit. But in between the boot here of Italy and up also closes in. Parts of the Aegean close in and stuff, but Crete is still left no matter what attached. I made a video a long time ago talking about this concept, but this is kind of a verifier video because there have been so many articles verified and papers written now about something that I was talking about as a third-hand thing before they wrote all those papers out, well, except for one or two. Uh, now there's like 19. So it starts to get really correlated data and more and more and people finding out this and this and aha well they said this so look at that you know and, and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes science is ever evolving a little bit changing but there's egypt and it really comes up to about here and then uh, about uh, 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 about there and then we have the cataracts beyond that you can even see the nile kind of way it looks right there but Believe it or not, there used to be giant oceans that are in here that are not shown here, but that depends on when we're talking about. So, here we can see the idea of dogger land and how much land was lost and missing, and people have correlated that to the idea of Atlantis. All that real dark area that's up there was all land, but it's so shallow that now that's the Black Sea, or the, sorry, that's the North Sea. This is the Black Sea, and you can see that it's separate, getting ahead of myself. This is the separator that goes out, you know, and the phosphorus and all that that's connected to it. But whenever it's at a low point like this, you can see that they don't really connect. And then when this overflows, there might have been a little river coming out of it or so on and everything. And you can look at the topography they found here, and there are rivers all going into this. This was a freshwater source. But then all of a sudden it fills up all that dark area all the way. I had somebody made a comment recently, whenever it filled up, it overflowed so bad that it flowed in the Mediterranean and filled it up. The Mediterranean used to be much lower, and it's like, no, dude, all the ice melted off, and there was so much of that, it raised the whole ocean of all the world, not just the Mediterranean, up enough to where it encroached and impinged on that and busted through, and now it's salt water. But let's just continue here. We're about to go to part two here shortly. When we do, it's going to be in your top left-hand corner. But until then, I will continue and try to find a spot. Also, these islands here in Malta and so on like that doesn't look like those were connected up. And at this same time, there are Homo erectus species that have gone through the planet and around in different areas. But if you look at the Homo erectus forms that they show you. It's a radical different forms of each and anything, and some of them even probably deserve their own classifications. Regardless of that, at that time, Homo erectus is known that he didn't have bifacial blade technology. He surely never had any boats. He had no maritime things. He, he was lucky he had a broken sharp rock on a stick. 
in comparison even the toolkits and so on it's so much more advanced even primitive people like the Amerindians and so on had such more advanced toolkits than something like Homo erectus would have had right I mean it's a it's a, it's an easy tell for anybody that does archaeology and find points whenever they see one if it's popped a certain way to try to make it sharper and this that and the other and stuff they go oh yeah this is this is from later this is from this person this was this except for in certain areas which we'll get into here shortly because Homo erectus lived on even past the last ice age so there's an idea of how that didn't work totally linearly with everybody and just like a land of the lost or King Kong's Island here where there's still dinosaurs and things of old there were places in the world just like we talked about a uh, Lord of the Rings and being weird people all over the world before the last ice age still existing there was Homo erectus still existing in certain places and we'll get into that a little bit, but that's more of a human origin situation. But I think it's amazing we're looking at an idea like uh, maritime and that you could make a boat, you could do these things. Now, people said, oh, they, they'd never make something big like this. Well, what this is is two kind of big giant canoes which come into a boat, but then they're attached by that giant thing in between them. And now they can get a whole lot of people on this thing. A whole lot. And you can control it a whole lot better. It can't fit in a little narrow river type of thing, but it's made for the sea and the ocean. And it can go quite a bit of difference. And don't you bet that the people that first took two canoes and put them together, and you hold on to my paddle, I'll hold on to yours so I don't want you to get knocked over because the ocean's a little rocky here, or to find some way to tie them across each other so it works and made a journey, didn't eventually, in a short amount of time, start making boats that were a lot bigger than that, that were a little bit made for the sea, that were a little bit for purpose, and so on. A lot of which are technologies we can almost still see today with outriggers and things like that. It's amazing how whenever something comes on and it's good enough, it doesn't evolve and change much more. And that goes with technology as well as people. If there's an ability, and with people it actually takes admix and something spurring it on and different changes people have talked about and changing through climate or changing through this, changing through a bunch of different things. But it involves a lot more hybridization as we'll get into here shortly. So it's in your top left hand corner and we'll continue from right here. Join me, won't you? Peace.